Every generation will not be confused. There is a generation that will get this thing. Say the compressed of a from that day. The creative dimension of the prophetic. There must be a performance because. Thank you. To deliver means to set free. Very quickly. The Bible teaches us that there are three levels of evil. Three levels of evil. We have another series, and so we'll take time to deal with that. But just for you to have an understanding, there are three levels of evil that the Bible mandates that believers must contend for deliverance from. Number one, the first level of evil is Satan and wicked spirits. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Three levels of evil that were mandated to contend for deliverance from. Satan and wicked spirits. First Peter 5 and verse 8. Here's what it says. It says, be sober. Apostle Peter is teaching us now. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So Satan is perpetually seeking whom he may devour. Are we together now? It says, be sober, be vigilant. It never calls the devil your friend. It never calls the devil an ally. In fact, the Bible calls him many things, including the thief and now your adversary. Are we together? So the first level of evil that we must contend for deliverance from is satan and wicked spirits are you ready for number two the second level of evil that the bible says to contend for deliverance from is wicked and unreasonable men write it down please wicked and unreasonable men second thessalonians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 1 to 3 second thessalonians 3 1 to 3 wicked and unreasonable men finally brethren he says pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Verse 2. It says, and that we may be delivered. Is that in your Bible? He's saying, pray for us. We are apostles, we are men of God, but we still need your prayer. That we be delivered not only from Satan, but that we be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Why? He said, for all men have not faith. I wish we could look at this from NIV or NLT. One of the versions will say that all men are not believers. He says, pray for us. NLT now. He said, pray too that we be rescued from wicked and evil people. The apostle is saying, scattered across your environment are such people. Not everyone is like that, but there are people like that. Are we together? It says, for not everyone is a believer. This is a very powerful information that you need to have and understand. It should not plant antagonism, but is, is an information that should create a garrison of defense within your mind. That in your environment, you will always find this man. For not everyone is a believer. Back to my illustration about the naivety of many Christians because the believer is mandated and the atmosphere, the kingdom culture demands that the law of love is what prevails among people. So many believers haven't been raised by Christian families, Christian homes are largely naive as to the reality of this world. The Bible says, we know that we are of God, he says, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world, not Nigeria, the whole world, not your village, the whole world, not Africa. The whole world lieth in wickedness. That means if you ever run out of any region in search for safety from Satan, you made a wrong mistake. The key is not a translocation. The key is to understand this system. Are we together now? That means if you run from Abuja and go to Lagos in hope that you are running from Satan, by the intelligence of scripture, that is a futile venture because Satan is so energetic, he can run to and fro the whole earth. 
Now, I don't know how many pilots can do that successfully, but this guy has mastered the art of movement. He is not weak. Satan is testifying before God about Job from whence comest thou, and he said, From toe and fro the earth. You should have a healthy, maybe not honor, but an appreciation for the presence of such a determined person. <laughs> a spirit that sustains the zeal to go to and fro the earth. It means the potential or the probability of meeting you is 100%. <laughs> he will find you somewhere. <laughs> Are we together? Amen. Wicked and unreasonable men. He says, for not all men have faith. Have this at the back of your mind, ladies and gentlemen, that when doors open, among the many people you will meet through open doors are wicked and unreasonable men. Wicked and unreasonable men. In Genesis that chapter 37, let's look at a few things just to buttress on that. I'm discussing three evils that the Bible mandates will be delivered from one Satan and wicked spirits, two now wicked and unreasonable men. Give us Genesis chapter 37, please. We'll read from verse 3 to 11, then we'll jump. I just want you to watch a story. Follow very closely. Now Israel, Jacob now, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors next verse it says and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than the brethren notice the progression what was the the reason for the hatred the father's love for him right he had access to the father's heart and the bible says they hated him that was an elementary level and could not speak peaceably unto him so if you were Joseph, you would notice that after a healthy commendation from your father, you would suddenly begin to receive ill treatments and antagonisms from your brothers, wondering, what did I do wrong? Verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, say open doors, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Are you seeing it growing now? They started by hating him. And then now a dream is added to that love again. And the reaction, they hated him the more. Verse 6. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. Brotherly naivety took him to complicate his matter. He went to share his dream. For behold, verse 7 now, We were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheep arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. Hmm. Verse 8. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? And shall thou indeed have dominion over us now? And they hated him yet the more. So we see hatred level 1. Then a dream comes the more. Then he shares the dream. Then the more. Are we together? Continue the reading, please, verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren. Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, now pay attention, please. <laughs> the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. I wish I had time, would have discussed what this meant. Verse 10. And he told it even to his father now and to his brethren and even his father now was getting concerned. The father rebuked him and said, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Verse 11. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the sayings. I'm a prophet. This boy is not just dreaming something is happening here that we do not understand jump to verse 18 wicked and unreasonable men and when they saw him afar off the father now sent him to come and check the welfare of the brothers even before he came near unto them the bible says they conspired against him to slay him question 
what did Joseph do that was wrong? He was loved, then he dreamt, then he dreamt again, then he dreamt again. Are we together? So the question you've been asking, what did I do? Here is the answer. You dreamt and you listened to a message and you paid attention and you prayed and you fasted and you rose in the spirit. It was interpreted as an offense in the spirit because it's now, listen carefully. <laughs> Let's read to 20, 18 to 20. When they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. 19. It says, and they said to one another, behold, this dreamer cometh. 20. Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. Now, notice that those that were talking were people of the same bloodline. They were his brothers. That is how far you do not know the potential that is in the unregenerate man to fight growth. Most people take for granted the reaction of success in the face of people who are not saved or not transformed. The Bible is teaching you here that you need to be careful. Don't just jump through open doors and be smiling. While you enter open doors, make sure you begin to prepare and fortify yourself with knowledge. I guarantee you, except it is not an open door, there will be adversaries. Hallelujah. Hmm. Did we finish 20? Let's throw him into the pit. And then we will say some evil beast that devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. The whole battle was about dreams, not the person. There are battles that have nothing to do with you. It's the mantle that is on you. There are battles that have nothing to do with you. It's a mandate. Listen very carefully. The prophecy that is on you is what is attracting many things you do not know the only way to abort that battle is to throw away the prophecy but for as long as it is on you listen carefully for as long as it is on you i guarantee you by the integrity of scripture there are battles that you will have to learn how to fight you will have to be like the men of David, trained at the cave of Adullam. You must know how to hold the sword and to fight with valiance until you are able to throw 800 people and still stand with your sword. Otherwise, some doors will become a curse to you. Not even Jesus was spared of this. Out of a family where nobody rises, suddenly the apostolic and the prophetic mantle lands on your life and you start to share dreams and visions and you said it like a joke and it happened you said it like a joke and it happened you said my sister will get a job they laughed and it happened after three days something will start being wrong with your shoes something will start being wrong with your hair why did you come home late and you are wondering what happened there is a reaction from the spirit listen to me if you do not know this life will teach you a lesson that will take many years to learn open doors have implications are we together there are three evils that every man will fight provided doors open one satan himself and evil spirits number two wicked and unreasonable men very quickly number three the flesh hmm. the flesh oh whoever told you that it is only satan you have to fight the flesh let me tell you something about the flesh in my opinion of all these three evils this is the most vicious of them because you can cast evil spirits you can run away from wicked and unreasonable men but this flesh you see it remains with you and the bible says to crucify it and you die daily the flesh <laughs> Romans 7 from verse 18 for I know that in me again our Paul is speaking now that is in my flesh 
dwelled no good thing for to will is present with me he says but how to perform that which is good i find not let's continue it says for the good that i would that i would i do not but the evil which i would not want to do that is what i do verse 8 20 let's continue it says now if i do that which i would not it is no more i that do it but sin that dwelleth in me 21 it says i find then a law that when i would do good evil is present with me 22 for i delight in the law of god sincerely in the inward man are you seeing the conflict now but i see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members 24. it says "O wretched man that i am an apostle that casted demons without talking twice is now expressing frustration what kind of an enemy is this that you cannot cast out with one word oh Oh, wretched man that I am he says who shall deliver me Paul is crying is there someone who can deliver me from this body of death listen the flesh is so vicious in its operation that it reveals itself in levels according to your growth there are many times that the flesh will lie low for many years and you would flatter yourself into thinking you have attained unto liberty without pressing in the spirit. It is simply because certain doors have not been opened. If you are not Solomon the king, you have no business with Bathsheba. Are we together now? Yes. If you are not Samson the warrior, you have no problem with Delilah. No. Are we together now if you are not abraham the one who should be the father of nations you have no problem with the frustration of barrenness that will lead to the birth of ishmael let me tell you ladies and gentlemen please hear me as you rise your flesh has a way of reinventing strategies that is able to attack and challenge you at the level of your growth there are some temptations that will never come to your life when you are broke it's not that you are delivered from them the temptation cannot work because what it feeds on to get to you is not even there. Are we together now? Please listen very carefully. If you have not been given an appointment in an office where there is a cash flow of one billion naira every week, the, you will think that you have immunity against bribery and corruption. And you may even have the audacity to write a book about those who are doing it this is why the older men become the more silent they become because there is something they learn with time that this life bar at the end of it all it is god is someone learning now you will understand why jesus said in your prayer do not forget to bring this deliver us from evil hallelujah Why will there be an attack over your car when there is no car there? I'm not being sarcastic now. Are we together now? Yes. There are many believers today who believe that they have attained unto a spiritual state that has magically immune them from certain things. No. The flesh is lying low, quietly, allowing you... Do you know now let me speak a bit of biology it is said a woman from age 12 or 13 or so has the potential to give birth but a woman can stand even at age 40 and her womb is there and you will never see pregnancy because the condition that allows that pregnancy has not yet been engaged is that true as soon as that woman takes in seed immediately you will see that that quiet that that pregnancy that has the potential for it had always been there same thing happens with a man this is how the flesh is there is something the flesh is waiting for to activate it operation and the unemployment issue has helped the flesh to lie quiet so you can believe that i am fine and i am free are we together there is a certain level of increase and influence that if it has not yet come Oh Jesus, 
for as long as you are still a baby even though you are the word incarnate no problem but as long as the news of your arrival got to Herod Herod said who did you say go and search the archives for me is there such and such a prophecy he said let me know where that child is so that I will come do you know that because of the arrival of Jesus many women lost their children does that look like a savior what kind of a savior whose arrival makes the death of there was a lamentation in Rama many people died because a gift that will save the world arrived whoever told you that good things don't create conflict Whoever told you that the arrival of glorious things will not bring contention from hell? Are we together now? Yes. This is a very powerful teaching. Jesus arrives. If you were the woman who lost your child, would you want to see Jesus? And they told you prophetically that this is the Savior. You want to save my life and you killed my child by your arrival. What a Savior. How about Mary? The moment it was announced in the spirit, Hail Mary, that salutation came and he said, you are favored. The next thing that followed her life was trouble and controversy. She was about to lose Joseph. Are we together? And then the scribes and the Pharisees came, just confess, who is the father of this child? A ghost. You must be stupid. You are playing with our intelligence on top of the fact that you have brought shame to your husband and our family. I'm an innocent young virgin. We do not believe that. Ladies and gentlemen, open doors come with challenges. That is the reason why men must be prepared to attain stature in the spirit. There are many doors that it is God that closed by himself because you have been weighed in the spirit and God has seen that if that door is open, the left, the bankruptcy of spiritual intelligence and stamina, you will die because a door opened. So he will close the door as an act of his mercy and quickly send you to men and women who would midwife your growth until you attain stature in the spirit and then that door will be opened. Are we together? You hear that in a family, the last person who became a pastor got mad after a crusade. You laughed hysterically and said, how can a man finish preaching and then be mad? And now you don't know anything about the dynamics of liberty. You have not learned that much. And then you wanted to go and organize a crusade in the same village. And you find out that the more you pray, the more the crusade is not holding. Don't force it. God is saying, listen, young man, it is true that Christ died, but we rise through light. You do not understand the ancient powers and the altars that have pegged their relevance in that land. You come in like Paul and just believe you dislodge darkness without spiritual intelligence. You will wake up with half of you not waking up. Many, many people have not followed the protocol of the spirit and they've barged into open doors arbitrarily to their pain. To their peril there are temptations you have no business going through for instance is it not when you are a big man that you now begin to fight for titles you didn't call me apostle joshua selman do you know who i am if you were a brother in the wilderness somewhere any name they call you even if they say yes you will answer but now that the door has been opened and you are a great man apostle joshua selman it is amazing to know that there is a whole industry that is built around ego because the higher you rise some unnecessary things become necessary so much that an industry was built around it if you are learning say amen, amen. some of you are praying and say god close that door i'm not i don't even want to get <laughs> you must pass through the door in the name of jesus hallelujah I remember one gentleman who came one time I don't know if he was here or he was in Zaria and he just brought a poster he said he was taking a step of faith he saw it in a dream he wanted to go and hold a crusade in a stadium in his place and I looked at him with compassion I said my friend God doesn't work like this huh just take it easy be faithful in your prayer group where you and he was determined I know what I had I said okay God go with you you see yeah sometimes it's very good to allow life itself to be able to help it's only that sometimes the casualties become so much even if you survive you may not have the strength again are we together yes 
battles that come as a result of growth. Let's tie a few things now. So the Bible says that the flesh is a big hindrance. When doors are open, I define flesh as the vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature. The vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature. The vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature. And the Bible says it can be activated. It can be activated in the presence of plenty. It can be activated in the presence of abundance. Watch this. Jesus is teaching in a crusade and there are hungry people who are tarried there for three days. And now they were hungry and a responsible father would say, um, let them sit. I'm about to feed them with bread. He got five loaves, two fish, multiplied it and gave it to them. Notice what began to happen. The moment they were getting satisfied, lawlessness came in. For as long as they were hungry, they sat quietly as they shared the bread. The moment they started becoming satisfied, they started throwing remnants of the bread on the ground. And after they left, Jesus quietly said, go around, pack what they have thrown. And they found out they had wasted 12 baskets full. You will not waste bread if you are hungry. But when you eat, you can now begin to waste because there is no need again. For as long as the nation of Israel were in need of a savior and deliverance, they would listen to everything Moses would say. But as soon as they crossed the Red Sea and attained unto a place of liberty, Moses went up to receive the commandments and he returns back to find idol worshippers who had suddenly changed. They had forced Aaron to build a golden calf and they began to bow and worship how short a time was it from their exodus that they had now forgotten that's what happens to men in the presence of abundance give us this day our daily bread then it does not stop there he said now pay attention to what comes along daily bread when you receive daily bread then he says lead us not into temptation temptation always follows daily bread and then he says deliver us from evil hallelujah there are groups and associations you may never know exist until you rise to certain realms in life are we together now you have become a ceo you don't drink you don't smoke, you love God, but you have attained a position of growth and honor where you are invited for an executive meeting. And the nature of that meeting demands global leaders to join you. And there are certain professional practices that may corrupt your conviction, but it is part of the modus operandi of that level of living. The courage it will take to stand and say no will take fasting and prayer. For you to be able to administer it because there are implications when you make the people feel stupid because of your faith are we together now yes there are many people who do not understand you get into a system where corruption is systemic it's not about your personal desire you met a design like that and your contribution is only part of the design how do you now fight that overall system you can fight an individual, but fighting systems are very difficult. Are we together now? Yes. You never knew that there was anger and frustration in you until God gave you large membership and you are preaching, people are saying amen, and nobody comes to say, Apostle, God bless you. I'm not saying you should give me money, please. I'm just using it as an example. And everybody just meets you and says, your sermon was powerful while you are trekking back home. Then you realize that that pain is in your heart. Remember, you said you don't have any business with the cares of this world. Your wife wakes you and says, is this how we are going to continue? When I married you, I knew what you told me God said. What is this thing we are seeing? That's when you will stand up and know that on a Sunday morning, you don't have a sermon because of anger. Not because you could not prepare. You are beginning to hate the people God sent you to because you don't even know what kind of stiff neck. Now you understand Moses' anger. And you will know why in spite of his anger, God still called him the meekest man. God rates people based on the pressures that are on them and the level of righteousness that oozes out in the midst of that pressure. Are we together? A woman who has eight children and no husband plus five other relatives that were added to her 
and she prays for only 30 minutes a day and she's faithful in it you can laugh at her because all your supplies come free you can lock yourself for three days and come out into supplies that are prepared and you will find out that God seems to honor that woman because he's rating her based on the realities that are there and her press to love God in spite of what is available is someone learning now this is very very powerful There are vulnerabilities that come when we grow. Listen, when you know this, eh, the higher you rise, the more humble you become. I've had the honor and the privilege of relating with the fathers of faith in this nation, and I am amazed at the level of humility and brokenness within them. You would think they were such a weak people, but these people are powerful in the spirit. Something, there is an education that experience in partnership with the spirit has brought to them that they have understood that, listen, it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth, but in truth it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know I found out that many men who become angry fathers, angry mothers were not born like that. Are we together? When you have five children, everything is rising except your salary. School fees is rising. Trouble is rising. Relatives are being added now. Somebody just calls you from nowhere and says, are you not aware we are related? Help me and pay my school fees. I'm not aware. I was never told that I have any cousin from anywhere so well just to inform you that i am your cousin i've told you you are our elder brother and since our parents are not there you are the new father we know responsibilities come and you find out that the man begins to get to his wife and children and sometimes the young children say why is daddy changing he will reset back in old age but for that as far as that reality is happening you find out that there are people who become things that they were not let me tell you, it's because the flesh was lying quietly, waiting for opportunities to come up. Are we together now? Yes. Who would have imagined, ladies and gentlemen, that Solomon was a murderer within, I mean, uh, David was a murderer within him. David, if you saw David, the young boy, who would not want that kind of gentleman to be a pastor? Who would not want that kind of gentleman to be a husband? You would have seen David, David epitomized the prayer point of every woman. And yet there was a murderer locked up in that young boy. But the murderer could not manifest. He could only kill animals. But you didn't know he could kill men too. One day when kings went for war, the man was roaming around his palace. And then he saw Vashti. That was the time for flesh to come out. He went so far to write a letter and gave Uriah, go and die. This is by my hand. And you thought that after Uriah died, he would say, okay, that's all right. He still, I hope you know that's how Solomon came. Hmm. The question is, when you understand this, you now begin to pray the prayer of the psalmist, search my heart, O God and know my thoughts it says and if you find out that there is any wickedness within me lead me to the way everlasting someone shall deliver us from evil hallelujah you never know as a man of god that you like money until god brings a billionaire as a son and he says papa or man of god or apostle what do you want just speak and it will be done and God said, don't say anything. Say, God, God forbid. I've suffered in this life. You are the one fighting my own progress now. I've preached, I've done it. Now it's my own time to rest. You said there remained a rest for the people of God. Now. When you had 100,000 home and abroad, God said, give it. You said, yes, Lord. In one word, you gave it. Now you have 10, 20 million and God said, give everything. You know, I, I'm, I, I know how God speaks. God cannot be this, this wicked. Knowing the reality of Nigeria to ask me, no, it can't be God. I reject that spirit. Satan appears as an angel of light. I reject that light. 
And when you finish, because God speaks once, you will hear twice. God will use every verification system you want. I am the one saying it. May you be delivered. Amen. Now, very quickly so that we can pray. There is a biblical requirement for accessing deliverance from God. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.